Hey, welcome to Performance Reviews, where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today, I have a Shark Duo Clean. Well, this machine probably looks familiar if you follow the channel. As you know, I gave it a less than positive review just about a year ago. And, like clockwork, these things are now coming in for repair. And this one huh, was made halfway through 2021 looking at the uh, plug. The detail I forgot to add there is this came in November of 2022. Some things have happened I said would happen, which are an interesting idea. As you can see, the fins are kind of dirty. They, they don't really work. Spoiler alert, just doesn't really work. The other thing about this particular example is it was really well taken care of. Even though it is a little dusty, the filter's pretty clean. The brush roller is almost spotless, which I don't usually see on these. But I'm gonna show you, kind of went wrong and give you an idea. So first of all, to my surprise, the canister is still functioning. Again, the owner of this seems to take care of their stuff, and I think that's why. However, the HEPA filter, I'll show you, is definitely shot and become loosey-goosey around the seal. So it is definitely leaking dust. As I said, and I'll show you that you can see just how loose that HEPA filter is right there. Again, that just happens over time. Sometimes a new HEPA filter will cure this, but these really don't stay airtight for very long, unlike a lot of the other HEPA filter designs. Um, and it's not just the expensive vacuums that the HEPA filters stay in place. There have been many budget alternatives over the years where the filtration is just fine throughout the life of the machine. Um, the Eureka 4870 comes to mind, but I digress. So that part, it's serviceable. So let's get to the dual clean nozzle, which I have a whole video of why this is gonna happen. And I'm not the only one who has a video on this. I'm gonna recommend you take a look at House of Vacuums. He has a deep dive into several of these nozzles showing this issue with Shark. So you don't just have to take my word for it. You can go just Google and find those. And I'll, I'll try to put a card here if I remember. They're a good channel, you should subscribe to them as well. Um, so let's take a look inside here. So the first thing we see in here is there is just one motor powering uh, two brush rollers. And it, it's not a very beefy motor, it's a very small motor. Um, that is what it is. It's a budget machine, right? So we have two brush rollers. And as I said, that this roller would get pretty nasty because there's no suction really going to it. And you can see that it got kind of a mustache going on over here from that. Again, not super bad, but pretty bad. You can just see the color difference right there on that. So let's get in here and there's a broken belt. Now this is a Kevlar reinforced belt. This is not designed to break and there's plenty of circuitry that should stop this belt and stop this unit before this ever happened. It seems to be ineffective on Shark. That's probably a cheapness of manufacturing. But this is the real problem with this nozzle. Because this doesn't have a traditional roller in it, I wanna show what that looks like. This is your traditional roller that's called a chevron shape. And as this roller spins in there, what it does is it takes the dirt and debris from the edges and brings it into the middle where the suction of the machine is. That makes a lot of sense. Now, what this roller does seems to be the opposite of that. It seems to take the dust, the debris, the hair, and move it to the edge. Now, furthermore, talk about these pieces that fell off here in a minute. So you can see there's not very much gap between the brushes and that. And I believe the purpose of this plastic part is it's supposed to break three hair and stuff on the edge here. Well, in typical shark fashion, things are, do not work as designed. And this sort of piece should at the very least be like resin filled plastic, but it's like real cheap ABS plastic. I think there could almost be an argument for this piece to be made out of like aluminum and have rubber mounts, but I digress. Let's go on to this side and what happened here. Oh no. So I'm holding three pieces that should be one. This should be connected and molded together as one piece. And as you can see, it is melted up. The bearing is seized with hair because the anti-tangle portion simply just doesn't work. And again, I'm not the only ones with these findings. This is what we said would happen a year ago when I first saw this machine, and it has happened. 
I guess this time I told you so, but I don't like to bloat. So just showing the damage here, the melted hair. Again, the roller is relatively clean. Yeah, everything is clean on this machine. So that's really melted up from the hair. And again, this is a pretty pristine example of this machine. And you can see, you can kind of see the problem. If you look right here, you can kind of see where the hair just actually goes into the bearing. And the real part that keeps this from resisting tangles is actually the width of this brush roller. This brush roller is pretty wide. It's even a little bit wider than this Lindhouse brush roller, which is one of the widest in the industry. Now this roller, curious enough, does resist tangle fairly well. So and as you can see, the power fins have also started breaking down. And these are, these are the thing that like could A, damage your carpet, uh, but really don't stay right in place. And again, I'm going to tell you, just go Google around. You'll find plenty of pictures of these dead. So that's what happened here with this roller. Now here comes the thing. If this was any other brand of cleaner, and you can go look at the channel. I have a whole list of different brands I recommend. I'm not a one brand person. I don't recommend one brand. I recommend a list of brands. If this was any other brand, heck, we were able to order a new roller with this piece attached, a belt, and get it done. But with Shark, we have to order the whole cleaner head. So half of the vacuum, the motor, the two rollers, I have to order that half. That's about $100. Sometimes they're 90 Sometimes they're like 130 It averages out to about $100. $100 repair on a $150 vacuum makes this disposable. So once again, Shark has just created a massive amount of e-waste. When I told you a year ago not to buy Shark, this is why I don't recommend Shark. This is why you can call up any local vacuum store and they're going to tell you to buy any brand but Shark. So that's why... As an industry standard, really nobody recommends Shark, who deals in repair, service, or vacuum cleaners in general. There's also a great list of recommended vacuum cleaners on the vacuum cleaner subreddit as well. And I do recommend pretty much everything on that list that's repairable. You don't see any Sharks on that list as well. So thanks for watching, folks. And a big thank you to everybody who supports the channel, who comments below. If you have a shark, I'd love to hear from you. Comment below. If this happened to you, let me know. If you manage to get shark to warranty this cleaner head, which is hard to do from what I've heard, I'd love to hear from you as well what the lead times were and stuff. And a big thank you to the super supporters of our channel from our Patreon and our Discord server who really help brighten up my day and make this content possible. So big thank you to them. Give this a thumbs up and have yourself a wonderful day.